Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Clank in space! Which, now I got that on my system, that'll be the last time you hear that. This is the sequel to the hugely popular, mega successful Clank deck building adventure game. In the original Clank, we were a bunch of fantasy thieves trying to sneak around in a dragon's dungeon, trying to steal artifacts and make it out alive. That same basic idea is true, but now we are sneaking through an intergalactic space lord spaceship trying to steal artifacts and make it out alive. And right now, I'm going to spend a few minutes telling you what's new in this standalone game, how it's different from the base game, in case you're curious and already know how Clank works, you just want to see what's different. And uh, after that, if you go hit the eye in the top right corner screen, go to the extended, I'll actually play a few rounds so you can see it in action, in case you haven't played the original Clank, although you really should have because it's excellent. And spoiler alert, so is Clank in space! All right, okay, truly going to stop that now. All right, here we go. Here's the board, and you might think, hey, that board is broken. Well, at this point, it is because I haven't finished setup. Here is the single coolest, biggest new element that gets added to the Clank formula. Modular board. We've got these three different modules. Uh, the Arena, Engineering, and Promenade, and on the other side, Med Labs, Hydroponics, and the Doomsday Cannon. And every time you play, you're going to take these three things and put them together in some kind of random mishmash. There are six different modules to choose from. You're going to have three of them in three different spots on the board. And each module has a different thematic feel, like the promenade here has probably the highest percentage of aliens walking around from corridor to corridor. So if you try to sneak through the promenade, you're going to be running into a lot more fights, just because that's where most of the crew is. On the flip side, if you come over here to the med lab, hey, there's a lot of spaces you can go to to heal yourself up. And um, if you go to hydroponics, there's ways you can heal up in a completely different way. And, uh, you know, the functions a bit differently because you're, I guess, uh, eating the herbs. Uh, the engineering, uh, you've got like these three warp cores and you've got different, well, there, there's a few different things that are going on. But suffice to say, each one of these is a bit different. And depending on what combination you get them in and what positions you put them in, you're going to get a very different spaceship. Let's say <clears throat> this time I say, hey, here's the engineering deck instead of the hydroponics bay. All right. And we'll go with up and up, 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 up. Uh, the arena, all right, we'll go ahead and put that over in this space, so we might have to fight our way out. The arena has some very unique elements. And then finally, oh, the promenade or the med lab. Promenade or med lab, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. let's go with this one. All right, it is the med lab, cool. So I've got a place to go heal if I get in trouble. So we have almost finished building the ship. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. And there's this piece, this... Uh, Oh, it's not called the turbo lift. It's called like the hyper lift or something like that. It's basically a quick way that we can get around from one area to another. And now we have got a completed ship. Uh, Erraticus Prime is the name of this ship, named after the Space Lord Erraticus, who we are trying to steal from. I think it's Erraticus, isn't it? I think that's his name. But anyway. I left the rules over there on the couch, and I can't look at them now. So we've got this board, and it is composed of the cargo bay where we come in. Everybody starts out over here. The command deck, which we have to get to because here's where all the artifacts are, and we're each trying to steal one. And so we, we start here. we got to cross through these areas that have been randomly uh, created, get to the command deck, get an artifact, and then make it all the way back out and get one of these escape pods. Escape pods is a cool little change. Uh, so there's big changes like the modular board. There's also little changes like the fact that instead of everybody walking out the same door, once somebody gets an artifact and gets out, as soon as they grab an escape pod to get the bonus 20 points, that escape pod is gone. Now everybody else has to get to a different one, uh, which is kind of cool. It might change how they're planning to travel. Also, as Lord Erraticus gets more and more angry, which means he's, we're going to be drawing more and more cards from, or cubes from his bag, um, not only does he draw more and more, but he starts throwing bounty hunters into the mix. When he's going to attack, hey, all our clank plus the bounty hunter goes in. And later on, if the bounty hunter gets drawn out of the bag, every player gets hit. And so you can see as he gets more and more angry, he'll throw more and more bounty hunters that are a danger to everyone. Also, when he gets up to this, he'll clamp down security and put this protocol here that blocks off the hyperlift. So that makes it a bit trickier to get out. So 
Oh, and then finally, actually, if one player does get out and then starts the countdown for everybody else, in the original game, everybody else had four rounds to get out, and they got progressively more and more challenging. Now, there's an infinite number of rounds, but they start out super challenging. You're just drawing four cubes every round instead of building up to one, two, three, four. Um, Lord Eraticus, once somebody escapes, he gets really angry and just really beats everybody else down hard. So, there's some changes to the way the end game works. The board is different, but there's even more, folks. To get into the command center, you may notice there's all these little symbols. The, there's a force field around the command center, and we can't get there until we hack the mainframe or, or an access panel. You may notice all these little green spaces all around here. As we're traveling around, we have to... Well, not only can we find big and small secrets like the regular game or go shopping um, to get stuff out of the shop, uh, just like the regular game, everything still costs seven credits now instead of seven gold. Um, and not only, instead of running into crystal caverns, we run into these security areas where once you move in, you can't move out on that turn. I mean, all your boots stop being usable once you move into a security area. But um, when we move into these areas where there's these little green screens, if we want, we can hack the mainframe or access the terminal or whatever it is. And that means we put one of our little markers here and we get the benefit or the penalty. Hey, I got one credit over here. Um, or one clank over here. Or over here in the arena, if you hack the uh, terminals that are down on the arena floor, you can actually get one attack strength. Um, so there's good ones and there's bad ones. And each player has to hack one in a different module. So I might start out and come over here in the arena and then hack this one. Then I might move over here uh, to the med lab because I got beaten up in the arena and try to hack one of these ones while I'm also getting healed up. Once I have hacked two terminals, and by the way, these terminals are not available to anybody else. So if somebody, if two players are running towards the same terminal, because some are much better than others, uh, I got I mean, this one's five credits. That's huge. This one's two victory points. And this one's two clank. And you know, so on. But anyway, once these are taken, nobody else can hack them. So somebody they have to go someplace else. But once you've hacked two terminals and two different modules, you get the um, the security pass, and now you can move to the end, get the artifact you came for, and get out. So there's one other big thing to talk about, which is movement. I mentioned there's this hyperlink, and it's really interesting. Once you move in, you know, I'm moving along and I get here, all of these spaces, these hyperlink spaces, are considered to be the same space. If you want to use the hyperlink, you don't have to use boots. You can just go from here to any of the other ones. Although if you look really close, you'll see there's a key uh, lock here. So like in the original game, any locked pass passage you want to go through, you got to buy a key, which is worth five victory points. But anyway, um, you know, so you can just effectively teleport from one to the other. Although you can't get to this one unless you've got a key and you've got a security pass. Because this is the one that gets you to the command deck. So this is very cool. Although, if you, uh, the interesting thing is, if I'm over here and then I use it to say, just jump right over here, because this is where I want to go, I can't move anymore. It's as if I went into, in Clank, they're called Crystal Caverns, but here they're called Security. I just can't move anymore because I'm dizzy. But next turn, I'll be able to move. But instead, I can just use boots and walk from one to the other if I want as well. So that's one way to get around. The other way to get around are these teleportation pads. Woohoo! But to be able to use them, once again, you got to go shopping and buy a teleportation pad access key. But once you've got that, um, you know, I could teleport from here all the way over here. Although, again, I can't use this one unless I've, taken, unless I've got a pass through the force field. But this is a way to get around quickly, too, if you make the investment in the key. And again, once you've teleported, you're dizzy, so you can't move anymore that turn. So you've got ways to move around uh, with a lot more freedom in a kind of sci-fi way. You've got this extra task you have to do of traveling to at least two of the three modules that have come out um, to hack them. And then you do your clank stuff of get to the end. And of course, all the while, you are building up your deck. And so you've got this market of cards over here. And I got to say, maybe my favorite thing of all is just how much, you know, this is a sci-fi geek's dream. There are so many cool references. Now, of course, people are going to expect a lot of Star Wars and a lot of Star Trek stuff like, hey, I can boldly go. Uh, wearing a red shirt instead of exploring, I, have, I can have the boldly go. Um, you know, the characters, there's like uh, one of the meeples has a laser sword. So if you get your Star Wars on. And they actually call them laser swords because I assume they know that's what George Lucas calls them. Um, or you could be, you know, the purple alien meeple or the guy with the trusty blaster. Don't need any hokey religions. You know, all that. Or 
the orange robot. Um, but there are so many cool references. Like I said, Star Trek, Star Wars. But did you expect Guardians of the Galaxy? Because here's a raccoon or a skunk. Um, or, I mean, sure. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy, that's cool. That's new. That's hot. How about Fifth Element? <laughs> How about Chris Tucker from The Fifth Element? Obviously, you know, re-envisioned as, as a real alien, although he was practically an alien in The Fifth Element. Um, oh, but this is one of the coolest ones, The Professor. If you read closely the flavor text, it's clearly the doctor. And they had the foresight to make it a lady doctor. I don't know if they knew ahead of time, and they must have been in development um, you know, during the time. I mean, did they change the art really fast? I don't know. Or maybe they just had the foresight to know eventually we were going to get a female doctor. But anyway, um, so... There are, I mean, you could dig through this deck. There are, I mean, pick your sci-fi poise. I mean, there's Zaphod Breeblebox and, um, you know, a Doc Brown and, uh, oh, 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 I mean, there, you know, get away from her, you. All righty. Um, Ender's Game? I mean, come on. That's a deep dive. Uh, oh, yeah, and of course the Terminator. So, I mean, that was just a few random cards. Um, you know, there's Nibbler from Futurama. I mean, so there's just so much um, stuff. Uh, science fiction geek lore. It's just a blast to see how these things mix up. But not only are there all these really cool thematic elements, there's new gameplay as well because some of the cards you can get belong to factions. And now by default, uh, there's three factions. There's Rebels, science, and, and pirates. And of course, Space Kunk, i.e. Rocket Raccoon, is going to be a pirate. Um, so they do their normal thing, you know, and they, whatever. But if you build your deck with a particular faction in mind and try to focus on one faction, then you might occasionally get turns where you've got multiple cards of the same faction in your hand. And when that happens, you can unlock bonus abilities. Very Star Realms. I mean, heck, it's even making reference to other science fiction deck builders. So, Space Space Kunk plus Information Broker, hey, that's four information, four data, plus an extra bonus because they're both part. So that creates a much more interesting deck building exercise as well. Because sometimes the best card for you, you might dump that and go for a cheaper card because it's got a good faction match. Or you say, to heck with the factions, I just go for the best, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, that, there is so much cool stuff in here. I think those are the big ones. There's probably a few other little things here and there, but the modular boards, the factional cards, the, um, you know, the extra quest you're on to actually hack the mainframe before you can get to the command deck, the fast ways to teleport around. There is a lot of very, very cool new stuff in Clank in Space. And you know what, final thoughts, folks? This is awesome. I mean, I love Clank. I think I maybe love Clank in Space even more. Although, honestly, I don't have to choose because the beautiful thing is if you dump the insert, all of the stuff from Clank and Clank in Space and Clank Sunken Treasures will easily fit in one box. So as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, these don't compete with each other. It just means, hey, sometimes you feel like fantasy, sometimes like you feel like science fiction. There's just tons of variety, tons of humor, very smart, fun gameplay, a lot of really cool new elements in here. And that, folks, is Clank in Space! I wonder, I wonder if the if Pigs in Space is referenced in here. Or maybe that's just, I, I don't know. I, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a Martin Landau, um, you know, Space 1999 somewhere in this deck. I mean, the game goes that deep. But anyway, folks, that's it. Awesome, awesome stuff. Um, if you haven't already tried Clank, you got to try this out. It supplements Clank. It's a standalone thing, but I mean, you know, it, it's just so fun. And that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Now, if you want to watch me play a little bit of this, you want to see it in action, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen. And otherwise, have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye.